الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد. I hope to feel I continue on in our study of Al Qasul Thalatha, the three fundamentals. We were talking about the various types of ibadah that Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala was talking about. He referred to al uh, ibadah uh, vahira wa ibadah batina. A vahira means the open ibadah, things like salat, uh, possibly paying your zakat openly, um, making the hajj. These are open acts of ibadah, uh, as well as the acts of ibadah that are inward, like tawakkul, wa tawassal, wa dua, wa khawf, uh, etc. And he mentioned, we got to the portion of the treaties and he was talking about dua, to let us know that dua is a great act of ibadah, because as we said, there are some sects and some groups and some people who say that it's permissible to supplicate, to make dua to the dead to people who are dead, to dead sheikhs, or uh, some make dua to their ancestors, and some make dua to the Prophet ﷺ and the NBA, Ali Imam And we already talked about how that's impermissible, and this comes because there's so much evidence, and we spoke about this extensively, and the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, in which he ﷺ said, a dua wa ibadah, that dua, supplication is ibadah. And this is on page 16. And this is demonstrated by Allah saying, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أَبْعُونِ يَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَخْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي يَسْتَخْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And your Lord says, Call me, I will answer your prayer. But those who are too arrogant to serve me will surely find themselves in hell, in humiliation. That shows us that some people, they, they, by not making du'a, so you should make lots of du'a. And du'a to who? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make du'a often to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the opposite of those people who are too arrogant to make du'a. Some people, they don't make du'a to Allah. Either for whatever reasons they, they have, and then there are those people who don't even believe in Allah aslan, and they don't supplicate to Allah because they're arrogant. They don't believe they need to pray to anyone. They believe and worship in their nafs, their selves. They say, hey, I'm independent. I, uh, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in a higher power. I believe in everything. I worship myself. Whatever the case may be, and so they don't supplicate to Allah because they're arrogant. They believe that when you supplicate and when you make sujood, that you're humiliating yourself, which you are before Allah. You are humbling yourself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So humiliation is the wrong word. You're humbling yourself before Allah. But those people who refuse to humble themselves before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya, in the hereafter, they will be humiliated before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مَدْعُونِ يَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَقْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادِهِ فَسَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ Call me, I will answer your prayer or your supplication. But those who are too arrogant to serve me will surely find themselves in hell in humiliation. So they'll be not just in Jahannam, but they'll be humiliated. There they will be humiliated. What does humiliated mean? Who knows what humiliated means? It means to be severely embarrassed, completely embarrassed to the highest level where you don't even want in, even show your face. You're humiliated. You're made to feel very small. And then uh, the Sheikh says, fear is demonstrated by Allah saying, فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, be you not afraid of them, but fear me if you have faith, if you're truly a believer. If you're truly one of the mu'mineen, that lets us know that fear, there are some levels of fear which is ibad. And we talked about the fear that's tabi'i, which means that the fear, which is natural fear, if you saw a lion, for some people, if they see a snake, they're scared, that this is a natural fear. 
But there's a fear, for example, if you say now you're so scared you don't want to go to the door because you, you think you're afraid of a lion, that's wrong because we know there's no lions in here. We know there's no lions here pretty much in Saudi Arabia, not the kind of lions like you find in Africa and find in the zoo and, and, other, and, and, and uh, maybe a tiger that you find in, in Bangladesh or India. We know we don't have them here. So for you to be so fearful you don't want to walk to your room out of just fear of a lion, then that could be to the level of ibadah because there's no chance. There's no, you're, you're fearing something which is absolutely not possible. And that's a high level of fear to be that fearful. That fearful is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that kind of fear. And also which is demonstrated and also showing all of this, he's mentioning this because these are different kinds of worship. These are different kinds of ibadah. Fear, khauf, uh, wishing or hoping. And so he says, wish is demonstrated by Allah saying, or hope would be a better translation, I think. فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever expects to meet his Lord, let him work righteousness, so do good deeds. And in the worship of his Lord, admit no one as a partner. Meaning that you should have hope that Allah is going to have mercy upon you. That Allah is going to save you from the fire. That Allah is going to give you reward. That's an act of ibadah. Having this kind of hope. And trust, as we talked about trust, tawakkul. Trust is demonstrated by Allah saying, Wallahi filiyato, uh, follow, Wallahi in kuntum mu'minin. But in Allah, put your trust if you have faith. So that's tawakkul. Tawakkul is also a high level of ibadah. We can't see tawakkul. How do you know if someone's making tawakkul? You don't know. You don't know if they put their total trust. Because this is the ibadah, the internal ibadah that has to do with the heart. It's not open necessarily. You don't know if someone's making tawakkul on Allah right now for their rizq. You can't tell necessarily. But you can see if they're working for it outwardly. So that shows us tawakkul is an inward act of ibadah. So that's what the shaykh is showing. He's showing that tawakkul is a type of ibadah and it's a type of inward ibadah. So is, is, can you see uh, if someone is making tawakkul? No, because it has to do with their heart. That they're making trust, full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a, a matter of the heart. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, وَمَنْ يَتَوَقَ لَعَلَى اللَّهِ هُوَ حَسْكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And if anyone puts his trust in Allah, sufficient is Allah for him. Allah is sufficient for the one. If you put your trust totally in Allah, that's sufficient. But most of us, we're weak in Iman, so we, we don't, we're not on that level. But it lets us know that tawakkul is a type of ibadah, it's a type of worship. Love. Reverence and humbleness are demonstrated by Allah saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, These, talking about the NBA, these were ever quick in emulation of in good works. They used to call on us, making supplication, dua, with love, love is ibadah, and reverence, reverence is ibadah and humble themselves before us, letting us know that humbleness, uh, reverence, and love, these are all acts of ibadah. These are internal types of ibadah. This is the way in which they were having supplication. They were supplicating to Allah, calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, striving with their good deeds with these characteristics of humbleness and love. They did it because they loved Allah. That's deep when someone loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that to that level, they love Allah more than everything. They've never seen Allah, but they worship Him and they love Him and they do their ibadah for His sake. That's heavyweight. That's a heavyweight love, and that's something you can see manifestations of it outwardly, but it's ultimately it's in the heart. Love and reverence and humbleness. It's in the heart. You you can't really judge it. It's difficult for us to judge how much someone loves Allah. And as the uh, evidence for this point. In the hadith of the Prophet 
there was a man, a Sahabi, radiallahu ta'anhu, wa radiallahu ta'anhu majma'in. One of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'anhu, he used to have a problem with getting drunk. He used to get drunk. Because it was in the beginning of Islam, and he, he had already used to get drunk before Islam, and he, did, he had a hard time quitting that habit. So they would find him getting drunk. And the Prophet Sallallahu ordered that he be lashed. You know, that he would get the punishment for being drunk. And some of the Sahaba, they were, you know, wanting to say bad things about him, you know, to make la'in, to cur curse him. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, don't say that about him. Because he loves Allah and his messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that shows that that Sahabi, radiallahu ta'ala, even though he was doing a bad deed, he still had love and iman in Allah. And his messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he still loved him. He still had a love of ibadah. But that shows that his iman was weak. He had some weakness in his iman because he couldn't, it was difficult for him to leave that alcohol. He still liked to get drunk. And so he was doing the sin, but he still had some love in his heart for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he had the love of ibadah. He still wanted to be Muslim and he still worshiped Allah. But he was weakening man. Also, then he mentioned, he said, looking with apprehension to the omnipotent is demonstrated by Allah saying, Fala takhshohum wakhshoni. So fear them not, but fear me. Fear is a type of ibadah. Repentance is clear in Allah saying, letting us know that repentance, tawbah, is ibadah or uh, inabah. In, in Arabic, this is inaba, and so then uh, the evidence for this inaba is wa anibu ila rabbikum wa aslimunuhu. Turn to your Lord in repentance and bow to Him, bow to His will, meaning follow the commandments of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and continually to make istighfar and 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 make repentance to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And when we make a repentance, repentance is ibadah. And istighfar is ibadah. And when you want to make tawbah to Allah for a sin that you did, one of the things you have to do is you have to be determined to leave that sin. And you have to uh, feel sorrow for that sin that you did. And you have to distance yourself from the environment of that, that sin. So those are being determined not to go back to it, leaving it, staying away from it, and being sincerely, fe f sincerely feeling sorrow about it. That's how you make tawbah in Islam. For a sin that you do, if it's like a major sin, you do that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will accept your repentance bi'idnillah. And that shows us what? That tawbah or inaba is ibadah. It's worship. And then... Seeking his aid is clear in Allah's saying, meaning that isti'ana, to seek aid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and strict assistance in, to the level of ibadah. You can ask for my help. You can say, Ammo, help me with the groceries. Ammo, can you please help me with this? Can you help me with this? Or I ask you to help me. This is okay in Islam. But there's a type of help when someone is totally not able. If you say, Ammo, I, uh, I need my risk to be increased. I can't help you with that. You say, Ammu, I want to make sure I never get sick again. I can't help you with that. I, Ammu, I want to make sure I live 85 years from now. I don't have the qudra. I don't have the power to do that. Only that is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that type of isti'ana, that type of reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking His help, that's only from Allah. If you try to seek it from someone who's totally not able to do that, if you go to the grave and you ask your great-grandfather who died, and you pray, you pray, you say, oh, great-grandfather, whatever his name is, uh, please help me, I want a good job, I want to go to a good university, I want to uh, get into the Islamic university, I want to do Talib al-Ilm, I want to do this, I want to do this, he can't help you, he, can't, he couldn't stop his death, he can't help you at all. And he can't bring your du'a closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He died, his record is finished. His reckoning is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
But if you ask someone who's a righteous person, you ask them to supplicate for you, say, you know, Sheikh, can you make dua for me? Because, I, I, you know, I just believe that you're a good person and I want you to make dua for me. That's okay. Or you say you need help from someone. That's okay. But don't seek help from the dead. Don't seek help from those people who can't help you with that. You don't have the ability. So, isti'ana, this is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking his aid. And Allah says in the Quran, which you say every time you pray, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ You alone do we worship, and you alone do we seek help. That's, uh, that's isti'ana, kama. That's the, the perfect, complete isti'ana, seeking complete support and help. That is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it's that level of worship. And from the prophetic hadith, the Prophet sallallahu said, If you seek aid, seek it from Allah. If you seek aid, you seek help, seek it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seeking refuge is clear in Allah saying, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and which we're told to say, and we see, say, I seek refuge with the Lord of mankind. The king of mankind. You seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't seek refuge in the people. You can seek help from the people. If you're in a war, you can seek some re refuge with people. But your ultimate refuge, which is coming, which is the level of ibadah, this is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The full trust, the full refuge of the heart, of giving your heart, giving your soul, it's only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Calling for help is clear in Allah saying that this is a type of ibadah. Either, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Remember you implored the assistance of, of your God, and he answered you, meaning Allah, that you supplicated to Allah and he answered you. Offering sacrifice is also a type of ibadah when you make the when you go and you sacrifice a sheep or a lamb or a camel or a cow or whatever to eat and for Eid and what have you. But you do it as a type of ritual to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to please Allah, then it, this is a type of ibadah. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kul in the salati wa nusuki wa mahyayi wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا أول مسلمين. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Say, O Muhammad, truly my prayer and my service of sacrifice, my life and my death are for Allah, the cherisher of the world. No partner does he have. This I am commanded, and I am the first of those who bow to His will." Meaning, that's that shows us it's worship. That 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 sacrificing your life, sacrifice, um, sacrificing an animal. Making dhabh, this is a type of ibadah. That's why it's not permissible to make dhabh for other than Allah. Some people, they go to the graves. They did this in Sheher, in some places in Sheher, and Hadar wrote, especially is well known, that some of the people would go to the graves, especially before. Maybe not as much now. Alhamdulillah. Now it's, it's little, I think. But they used to go to the graves, and they would sacrifice animals to the person in the grave, and even leave the meat there. Or they would seek blessings from the dead person of the grave for their animal. Or another thing, which is, this wasn't sacrifice, but before the people used to get married. This is one of the, the major tulab in Sheher used to tell me, one of the big teachers there, one of the, you know, the Sheikh students. He said that our grandfathers, our, our, our ancestors here in Hadramot, in Sheher even, that before they would get married, for the, with the girl, they would, the girl, she would be a virgin, she would get, the man had made the proposal, they made the nikah, before the man could be with his wife, they would give the girl to the sheikh. A'udhu billah. So that means the sheikh would have relations with the girl first, before the person who was marrying her. That's the kind of, that was sh the kind of uh, misguidance they were upon. And they were seeking blessing from the sheikh. This is a type of shirk. This is a type of ibadah. They were seeking, this is a type of worship because they thought he was so holy and so righteous that they would even give their own wife to the sheikh first. And then he has his wife. Wa'iyadu billah. 
So that shows you how far people can get away from Ibadah. If they don't know what true worship is, and knowing that these things are a type of Ibadah, then they, if they don't know that that's Ibadah, then they can fall into shirk easy. That's why the Sheikh was mentioning all of these acts of Ibadah, letting us know that Tawakul, Tawassul, Raghaba, Rahaba, Khushul, Khashia, Khof, uh, all of these are, and Dua, all of these are types of Ibadah. Iman, Islam, Ihsan, it's all Ibadah. So we can't give that to anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then finally he says, he mentioned the hadith uh, the, uh, the, where the Prophet ﷺ said, This is in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, Cursed are those who sacrifice to other than Allah. That's why we can't sacrifice. I can't say, Bismi Ummi. I can't say, In the name of Ummi. In the name of so and so. In the name of this one. No, I can't. But instead we say in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who does that, this is cursed and this is a type of shirk because this is ibadah. It only goes to Allah. And finally he says, and votive offering is demonstrated by Allah saying, meaning that you, uh, when you say, by Allah I'm going to do this deed, I'm going to do that deed. That you're swearing by Allah. That that's an act of ibadah. And what is the evidence? How do we know it's ibadah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Insan, يُفُونُ بِنَذْرِ وَيْخَافُونَ يَوْمٍ كَانَ شَرُّهُ كَانَ شَرُّهُ مُسْتَطِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they perform their vows and they fear a day, the evil of which spreads far and wide. So that lets us know that that is a type of ibadah. Another is a type of ibadah. And أَحَبَةِ the اللَّهِ we finished now the first section of the treaties, which was talking about the, the first usul from the three usuls, is that the, re relating to the question of the grave, relating to uh, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you'll be asked, who is your Lord? All of that was to show about who your Lord is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that worship only goes to Him, and that there are different kinds of worship which go to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second fundamental is knowing Islam by the textual evidences, and we'll get into that in the next sitting. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, and bless us to be on our scale of good deeds, and forgive us, and bless us with ilm nafiyah, wa rizqin tayyibah, wa amalun mutakabinan, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.